let's start with Sunak first. What is the latest there? Yeah, well, it's Sunak, it is, again. it is, it is. And it's every day, there's a little bit of incremental news. But Sunak is important because it's an extension on an extension. They are trying to delay a payment on a bond that they already have a payment plan for. And it's important for two reasons. The first is that fundamentally, as George highlighted, the property sector is still under immense stress. Sales have not improved. And so even though a ton of Chinese property developers have tried to avoid official defaults in the local bond market, they've tried to get these extensions, actually they're still even struggling to repay those elongated timelines for repaying debt to avoid delinquencies. So that stress, we're starting to now slightly creep into the onshore market, which has been remarkably resilient through all of this. So that's certainly a worry. And the second aspect is where local creditors fit into this whole um, cycle of stress. And we know, you know, there's been a lot of chatter about preferential treatment for, for onshore creditors, mm -hmm. offshore creditors feeling quite resentful at times. I think about some of that treatment but actually we're starting to see it can also be a disadvantage if you're a local creditor that you are tied up in a situation like this where the bonds are being endlessly extended and you're not really being repaid or at least being repaid very incrementally that isn't necessarily to your advantage mm. so the longer this stress cycle continues the more pressure that local creditors will also start to feel yeah, you mentioned the cycle of stress. Uh, where am I looking at in terms of contagion risk now, or is this all kind of idiosyncratic? Um, well, I think there's a bit of both. We've definitely moved into a new phase of stress in the credit cycle. Um, so when we start to see things like Fosun's dramatic bonds, they've come back up. But what a dramatic plunge there. Really, investors incredibly, incredibly jittery. Um, and I think, again, although contagion has been relatively contained in that industrial space, we'll continue to see that pressure. Um, but again, I think focus also shifting into the onshore market. And then finally, the third area is really what's going to happen with these restru restructuring and distress cases still looking for two landmark cases RNF and Evergrande. Evergrande they, they're facing this sort of lawsuit does that in any way impact the restructuring process? <laughs> Well, everyone's saying it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, typically, um, we do see these kinds of winding up petitions being filed. Creditors ultimately just trying to get a little bit more leverage to argue their case for their specific notes. Um, it doesn't often help if the bonds they hold are the same as everyone else's. It's not to a company's advantage to really single out and give preferential treatment to a small group of creditors. Um, but I think, I mean, the deadline is still end of July. And yeah. so that's going to be a big one. I think the idea is Evergrande is really going to be a benchmark for a lot of how these other situations uh, sort of work themselves out. And a lot of investors are now watching that to see how they are going to sort of advocate for themselves in other distressed situations.